further discuss this, I'm being joined now by social commentator Dayo Fagulu. Thank you very much, Dayo, for giving us your time. Sharing news for all concerned, especially the family and these children um, that have been released. What was your immediate thoughts when you heard that the children are now free? Well, for starters, uh, I think it's probably uh, exciting news. That's the best way to put it. Considering the, uh, the trends in, in past times where um, kids have been kidnapped and they haven't been returned, um, or kids have been um, kidnapped and returned after a large ransom has been paid, or accidental deaths. So, I mean, uh, 137 kids is a major development and is something, I mean, to be proud of. And I think, you know, it's, the excitement is, uh, is all over town. We're all, we're all excited about it. And we look forward to things like this happening, where it's a change from the, from the bad news we used to have. I mean, that's, that's the starting point. Um, the, the, other, the other thing is it also shows uh, that the security agencies in Nigeria have the capacity to check this trend. It also tells us that the government also has the will, the political will, to bring this trend to an end. And everything accumulates to good news for everybody. I think it's, it's, a, major, it's a major development that we should be proud of. I mean, I personally feel so much relief. I, I don't know how to explain it. But then, there are questions that need to be asked. The celebrations will continue for a while. But pertinent questions like, how is it possible that for weeks it was reported 287 children, or some will say over 200 children, went missing? There are concerns that the clarification as to the exact number is just coming now that these children has been, have been released. What are your thoughts on that? Who should be held accountable for this misinformation? One teacher made a figure available to the media, but then it just went off from there. Well, you, you must remember that we're not very good when it comes to statistics. Um, this, this, is a, this is a Nigerian thing. And um, as far as the, the news media is concerned and, and the reportage, you find out that we have conflicting figures. It's not a Nigerian thing alone. It's a universal thing where there's a discrepancy in, uh, in numbers or in the data that is made available to us. Having said this, you must understand that because it's a security issue, basically, um, there may not be full disclosure as we would expect it as civilians. Um, they never told us, I mean, what transpired what um, systems they engaged with to get them out, where, where their information sources were from. Basically, um, there's, a, there's a part which is intentional. Um, we're not being provided full information as civilians or as a civilian populace uh, because they might require these uh, secrets to pursue uh, the other kidnapped uh, citizens. So I guess I, I don't expect to have full disclosure under these circumstances. I'm just hoping that they would, uh, they would uh, elevate the situation in such a way that we have a bit more transparency and we have better conversations, um, which may improve also the security situation moving into the future. What lessons do you think we can glean from this going forward in terms of protecting our schools, especially in volatile areas like up north? Um, that, that basically is, is more of a security question. And um, honestly, I don't think there's very much we can do. You must understand that um, the object of the um, situation now with, with CAFTA, the free trade uh, uh, zones, is to allow the movement of people, I mean, through the, the countries of Africa, to ease trade and to ease development. So, I mean, people are going to be crossing borders and people are going to be crossing territories extensively in years to come. I think basically one of the things they can do is to strengthen their capacity to monitor. And I mean, I'm talking about drones, I'm talking about uh, blips in the sky, I'm talking about satellite, uh, um, um, you know, surveillance. That's, 
the best we can get. We should have surveillance systems out, out in the air. I mean, checking on territories consistently to make sure that these things do not happen again. Uh, as a political watcher, what would you um, uh, say to the assurances that's being given that um, the security of every Nigerian is being prioritized, that the security forces will do more? That's a fresh assurance on our care from the federal government. Do you feel confident that they will see this through and we will have less cases of kidnapping in the coming days and months? Well, let's put it this way, more than ever, I feel more assured now because, I mean, somebody said something and he got something done. And that's, that's uh, in tangent to what has happened in the past, where words, empty words were spoken and no results were gotten. So, yes, um, I think we feel a bit more secure now. There's more assurance than ever that uh, this government has the political will and that the security uh, services have... Uh, whatever it takes they have the capacity to pursue this agenda so yes um it's it's more of a good time like i said to you earlier on one right, has guys. more confidence than we ever had thank you very much for speaking with us it's a pleasure